So you're trying to code declaratively and then you come across a situation like this. You want to use some kind of third party API like this alert controller here, but it has an imperative API. So in this example, I have an alert that I want to display every time the new player's stream emits a value. And you can see that happening on the right here. Every 10 seconds or so, we have this alert pop up to say that a new player has arrived. So I'm trying to code declaratively, but since this API that I'm using is imperative, I need to do this manual step of imperatively creating a new alert and displaying it. And since I want to display data from this new player stream, I also have to do this manual subscription to pull that data out and pass it to the imperative API. Again, breaking out of that beautiful reactive declarative paradigm and creating a manual subscription that needs to be handled and unsubscribed from appropriately. So are we just out of luck here? Uh, the library we are using is just imperative, so we'll have to just suck it up and deal with it. And of course not, otherwise the title of this video wouldn't make sense. So there's a reasonably simple trick we can do to turn an imperative API like this into a declarative one. The idea is that we just take the imperative functionality and wrap it up inside of our own little declarative component. So let me show you how that works. Okay, so now we are looking at the declarative example. And as you can see, we now have this custom component that accepts a message input for the specific alert that we want to display. So this allows us to just use the async pipe to subscribe to our new players stream for us and no manual imperative step is required now to create and display the alert. Whenever this message input changes, for example, when the stream emits a new value, it will display a new alert. And again, if I just quickly pop up the application again now, if we wait for a few seconds, we're going to see that first alert being triggered. So it works exactly the same as it did before. We just have this different style now. So to achieve this, I have created this separate directive here called notification alert directive. And I've given it a selector of app notification alert, which is what allows us to just drop it in the template like this. So it's a directive and not a component because it doesn't need its own template in this case. And all we have in here is an ng on changes that listens for changes to the message input and creates the alert for us using the same imperative API as before. Now you might be thinking, wait, this is just imperative programming with extra steps. We're still using the same imperative API, but we had to build this whole extra directive on top of it. So the only obvious benefit we are getting here is that we can now use the async pipe to subscribe to this uh, stream instead of subscribing to that manually. So if that was more or less what you're thinking, then you're basically correct. But all declarative programming is like this. It's just a higher level abstraction on top of imperative code. It's just that this time we are writing the abstraction ourselves since the API we are trying to use is not already declarative. So in this case, we are putting in a bit of extra work to keep our core code base declarative. Uh, in some cases, even if you are generally coding declaratively, you might decide that there isn't much value in creating a declarative wrapper. And sometimes you might just want to use the imperative API directly and just be done with it. Now, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong if you think that because I am a bit of a declarative code zealot, uh, but personally, I like having hard rules that remove decisions like making the entire code base declarative as a rule, uh, even where it might not technically be required or even useful. It avoids having to make these kinds of decisions on the fly and helps to prevent those, well, this is a special case uh, kind of decisions from creeping into places where they really shouldn't. All right, that's it from me for now. Uh, I'll link to some more videos in the description if you want to learn a bit more about declarative coding. And as always, if you got any value from this video, a like or subscribe before you go would be very much appreciated. And I hope you stick around for the next video.